to NFTY Guide today. We're interviewing former Major League Baseball player turned visual artist Micah Drew Johnson. Hello, Micah. How are you? Nice to Welcome. Nice to meet you. Thank Welcome you. Thank to you. The NFT you. space. I think you belong here. Welcome to the visual art family. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Thank you. And um, I, I think it's fair to say that you're on top of your game right now. We got some big plans. Um, so I think this is just the early steps, but it's all a process. It is, right? But I mean, I think what's crazy at the moment with you and everyone's like, who is this guy? Is you sold over $1 million worth of NFTs in one minute. And I want to talk about that. Um, you had a career for, what, seven years in the major league. So in 2018, you quit. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, you've exploded in the art world, the NFT art world. I want to know how you became known as the baseball player that likes to paint. That's what yeah. you started off as. Oh, so yeah. you, and then how did you end up going from in 2018 into quitting baseball and ending up selling over a million dollars worth of NFT art in a couple of minutes? Can you give me a little backstory? A little yeah, time? definitely. Um, you know, I started painting in 2016, I started dabbling. And then eventually, you know, I was taking campuses on the road with me on road trips and just painting in my hotel room and had it in my first exhibit in 2017 in January uh, at Dodger Stadium. Followed that up with another exhibit at the end of the year in Atlanta um, when I was with the Braves. And, you know, painting was something that I've always, I've, I've enjoyed because I enjoy the process of things. So with painting, you can really see yourself get better the more you do it. You know, I started out, I wasn't very good, but had a few teammates see my first painting and they encouraged me and said, you know, you're, you're this is really good. So I was like, okay, I'm going to, I guess I got something. So I just wanted to keep working. It's something for me to continue to work at. You do um, have a natural talent. You can see it. Thank you. Um, well, for me, you know, I think it, the journey was really just that I wanted to, I just like working and I like progress. So failing for me is something that I embrace, something that I've become accustomed to through baseball. So I'm never afraid to go for something different or put my stuff out there. And so in 2020, early last year, um, I started painting my nephew in an astronaut helmet, which became, which was after he asked his mom if astronauts could be black. For the audience that doesn't know, so October of 2018, you stopped playing baseball professionally. Someone had said to you a while before that, um, have you got a hobby on the side? And you said it was painting. So you got known as like the baseball guy that likes to paint, experimenting with painting. Then your nephew's in the studio with you. And one day you hear your nephew saying, can astronauts be black? Something like that. And that's like the aha moment for you that def started defining your practice. Yeah, at that point I was in, I was in North Carolina painting the garage. I was nowhere near um, any kind of, you know, any gallery's radar. But in between 2018 and 2020, I was just painting random things that had no like real um, right, you're exploring. direction or no real message that I wanted to convey in my art. I was like, I need oh. to like refine my style and hopefully, you know, come up with a message that I want to convey. And naturally, you know, you know, that, that occurred. And at that same time, I had really kind of fell in love with charcoal. And I felt like this was kind of like my thing. It just all hit at that right time. Fast forward to about June that year, last year, I reached out to Art Angels Gallery and I said, hey, this is what I've been doing. Are you interested? And they, they loved it um, and been working ever since. Had two exhibits with them. Um, How did you, why Art Angels? You just uh, Googled them, yeah, they, like their work or like their taste? They saw some of my work back in 2017 in Atlanta and they were interested in it. But at that time, like I said, I didn't have anything. To be a very successful artist, I think you have to have a cohesive style that people recognize. So I wasn't ready at that point. Because you've developed so, your style now. So your style is strong charcoal, black charcoal paintings, portraits of, of young children with splashes of vibrant color. Um, and so you developed your style around your nephew who posed the question to his mom, can a black person be an astronaut? And from then on, your work has taken kind of on a theme of, yes, a black person can be anything they want to be. And you explore kind of, uh, and I wrote this down, empowerment, dreams without restriction, dismantling racism. That's all what your work embodies. But your nephew kind of sparked, almost gave you the aha moment of, of where you wanted the direction of your artwork to go. Yeah, and it's very interesting because I, I feel like I've, you know, I've got to chase my dreams and I've achieved my dreams and I never once ever felt like there were limits to my dreams. I've always wanted to play baseball and I did it. 
Um, I wanted to separate myself from my baseball career as an artist. I've done that. And now with Aku, you know, when I created Aku, I wanted Aku to eventually have a book and, or like a TV and film deal. We did that. So I've never felt there were limits to my dreams. So trying to convey that now on a more broader scale, it kind of like, it's become very personal. How did you end up knowing about Nifty Gateway way back when? Because you were one of the first visual artists, fifth vis visual artist they dropped, right? Is that true? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I got into crypto late 2019, just as a way to kind of, I thought it was another vehicle or a, pop, a way to generate revenue. At that point, I wasn't selling in galleries and I was hanging my art and like trying to get my art exposure. Um, so I've discovered crypto art and- On your own you know, or do you just have like super cool, like techie friends? Everything's readily, readily available on Google. You just have to go yeah. search it. So I was just searching around and discovered it and you know, release I think my first work in early 2020 or something. NFTs? Yeah, NFT are yeah. super rare. And then I realized like at that point, you know, I, I released a couple more like paintings, like animated paintings. And at that point I realized that, you know, I really wanted my paintings to be my paintings. And I think they're meant to be seen in person um, on, on a wall because of like the, you know, a lot of my work has like fingerprints on it and charcoal lines. So I was like, you know, I needed to figure out another way to utilize the power of NFTs um, and the utility of the tokens um, without having to, you know, bring my paintings into this world. And that's kind of how I did sovereignty. And that's my favorite work that I've ever done. Um, when did sovereignty happen? Like That was in November. That was in November. Um, and it's a programmable artwork. There's a door in the middle. There's an ash on one side and two boys on the other. And each year on the birthday for the next 11 years, the door opens up slightly more until they're face to face with the astronaut. And each year on their birthday, you can donate uh, Bitcoin to them. And when they turn 18, the keys to that wallet will be turned over to them. Um, that's why it's called sovereignty, because I believe that, you know, crypto and Bitcoin in particular provides that, you know, self ownership over your own assets. Um, Which was brilliant of you to think that. And I love the term digitally native kids. That's, you you've been able to expose yourself to a broad audience well, to yeah. put your message that anything is possible out. And yeah, I think it's like, the way I look at it is like crypto native IP is what Aku is. I started to see the power of the community in the NFT world and the way that you can release an idea or a character in this case and build an organic community who are mutually incentivized to build the, the community even more, you know, right. um, so that's why I release Aku crypto natively is because I knew the power of the community in the crypto world and that if I could reach them and grow an organic community there, that I could potentially go leverage that into the real world with like TV and film or other things that I was interested in to further expand the Aku world. And the teas that you dropped that sold um, within minutes for a million plus, that was of Aku? Yeah, so Aku is 10 chapters. We're going to release crypto natively over the course of the year. And, you and then so far. I've done two so far. And at the time, as we build these chapters out and as we build out Aku world across, you know, non-crypto and crypto universes, um, the direction of the company is always going to be for facing crypto where we're built, we want to build the infrastructure that allows us to funnel Aku and other additional small IP like Aku through funnels crypto natively to prove a potential market fit for the characters or the stories. And then also be able to create infrastructure that allows us to reward the community that was there from the beginning that propelled the character to be something beyond just crypto. So for example, there's 1400 Aku chapter one sold. Okay. So that's a community right there that is a very, strong community so then you say there's 1400 uh, aku is that 1400 uh, like a limited edition of 1400 sold like yeah so we had yeah so 1400 people bought chapter one so there's only 1400 available in chapter now one. with that did with chapter one did a sculpture come with that because i know you've got a 16 inch high resin sculpture of aku correct so yeah. did each person that purchased an nft 
get a physical sculpture as well, or that was only for certain people? No, we only did t we did ten of those. Um, only sculpture. ten. Yeah, right. and those are getting, those are getting shipped out today, actually. So yeah, only ten got those sculptures, and the sculptures are very. Um, so you, it's a cool way for people to collect, but also we're, we're keeping those very, very, very scarce. What crypto allows you to do is create, like release the creation, monetize it, and then co-create all in like simultaneously. So what we did was we created Aku, you know, take that time to create Aku, release Aku, monetize Aku, and then now we let the community kind of co-create and build Aku how they see fit. It's a very powerful uh, dynamic. So I think just in terms of for, for investors, they're probably excited to learn about how they can jump in on number chapter number three. What does that mean for them? Do they get something tangible? That Will there be a couple of tangible um, Aku sculptures that they might be able to bid on? The way the dynamic is working is you if you have chapter one, two, and three, then chapter four is free for you. So chapter ah. four is only going to be for collectors. And we get two of them. They get two of them because one to hold to reach all 10 chapters because there's a there's rewards for people to own all 10 chapters the other one they can sell it and on the secondary market um, which i think is important too or hold it and so right now we're building in like this this collector based scarcity model where the collectors and the early adopters of aku who launched aku into what he is today control the the scarcity of these nfts right exciting so is there a website that they can go on to learn about all of this? Yeah, you go to aku-dreams.com or follow Aku Dreams on Twitter and Instagram and Snapchat. Snapchat Lens is about, it just went live today um, where you can have put on the Aku helmet and step in the Aku world. Whoa, um, that's so yeah. cool. So download Snapchat and check out Aku. Aku's oh, wow. A, Aku's a public figure on Snapchat now. That is yeah, so his cool. lens has Yeah, his lens has gone viral. When did it go up today? A couple hours ago, and it's gone nuts. So, oh, Aku's gone. Oh, that's awesome! So, pretty much with every any person that invests in any of your artwork, there's a, a portion of of what you sell that that will be funneled into some form of charity, whether it's educational for children or. Yeah, so that's what's interesting here is like that's not like that's actually not the case all the time where it goes to some charity, but what. I've seen recently with Aku, a lot of schools or, or teachers are organically integrating Aku into the classrooms. Yes. So we're creating one of the verticals of the Aku company would be to create this educational arm that can, you know, create like programs and different things that can benefit um, kids and like help them in STEM programs and like um, introduce them to, you know, maybe influential people or inspiring people or different things like that from an educational vertical. Do you have a book deal yet? <laughs> no, not yet. Step not by yet. step. Yeah. But that's next, right? A kid's kid's book? I would kids love that. Books. I would that love would that. would be awesome. When did chapter one come out? When did chapter two come out? And when is chapter three coming out? Chapter one came out in on February 21st. Chapter two came out um, last Sunday. Chapter three, you know, the plan is to do a release a month and release the chapter 10 in December um, around Art Basel. So great. Are you involved in Art Basel? Yeah, we will be. In what capacity? A big one. <laughs> oh, it's like hold tight, wait to find out. Mm, it'll be fun. I'm excited. Okay, and I love Art Angels. Art Angels represent you there in Miami and LA. Um, they yeah. have just these, those girls owned by two women. They have the best taste in contemporary art. I love their taste. And um, there's a vault that they have. The Aku is in yeah. a vault. The very yeah. first Aku that was ever made is in a vault. Exactly, exactly. And who, and who owns that? His name is E.T. E. Young. So um, that, was, that was part of the chapter one auction as well. So he owns the very first resin hand-painted Aku, the 16-inch Aku that was ever created. It's in the <clears throat> vault in Miami. He can take his friends down to the gallery and, and say, I'll take you down to my vault and come and have a look at Exactly right. Exactly. He's the only one that can access. So. That's cool. That's cool. So he is he planning? What's his plans? Do you know? Have you met him? Is he planning on holding on to amazing his Aku, a, um, piece? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amazing, amazing collector. Amazing person to have a part of the community. Just like supporting the artists. Um, mm. so. No plans to sell it anytime soon. 
Mm -mm. It's more. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. It's fantastic. I love this vault idea. So is there vault in Los Angeles as well as in Miami or? No, Miami only. It's only Miami at the moment. Okay. Okay. I wanted to ask you, so just a, a lot of people are learning about you for the first time in the NFT space right now. NFTs are still like people are still in the art world, including visual artists are like, how do we be a part of this? Collectors are like, how do we invest in this? Do we want to invest in this? I mean, for collectors, for example, um, you know, a lot of people like tangible work. How can someone if, invest in your, in your NFTs and then show it off? Like they're going to want to show it off. How can they do that? Are you envisaging, you know, um, digital frames where people can show their work? Yeah, like, how do you envisage? Frames are cool. Frames are cool. They'll be a thing. Um, but at the end of the day, I mean, if you have a picture of, you know, let's say your kids on your phone, you just show them your phone, right? right. A lot of these works are about, I'll speak about Akim in particular, like the NFTs actually not necessarily about like, how can I display this? This is like akin to a painting. This is more akin to like being a part of something that is special and, and unique, right? Because I'm think like about that. this, if in two or three years now you get the Aku movie and in another 30 years, Aku is like this character they talk about, like Mickey Mouse, for example, and you own the first 10 chapters of the, the story, then that's, that's your ticket to show it off. It's the NFT, which is stored on the blockchain. And then what I tell collectors all the time about Aku is like, you're you're gonna be a part of history it's valuable yeah, five, ten. yeah 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 cool that's very valuable so why that's m another reason why i released aku crypto natively because i believed in my vision i believe in my work ethic to build this thing into something special and so it allows people to be a part of history yes that's true let's go away from nfts right now and talk about your tangible physical work so it's bold. It's it's you work with charcoal a lot, splashes of color. You just had an exhibition called the Black Sheep exhibition last month, which your first ex solo exhibition was a complete sellout. This one is nearly a complete sellout. It's been a major success. And the next show you're gonna have is Art Basel. Oh, uh, we'll do something a little different in Art Basel, but yeah, I mean, I can't. I mean, I've been so busy with Aku that I can't be can't wait to go back into the studio and paint. Like right now, I'm in the office, but like. You know, I, I have, have a feeling you're going to have to do a Damien Hurst and like start hiring people to paint no chance. because, no chance. because like you're going to be way busy with Aku. He's just going to go off on this whole, you know, it's like a fractal. It's just, there's so many, so many avenues. It makes that the paintings more scarce. Yeah. It What's makes that? the paintings more, it, said it makes the paintings more scarce. So, um, the less, um, is coming out, I guess it's better for early collectors, I guess. Sure, sure. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about Anonymous. I'm, I'm curious to know about the deal there. And they're wanting to try and turn Aku into a TV series and a, and a movie. Someone, if you've got script writers on board right now, brainstorming with you, are you dictating the story? Or are they working with you on the story? How does, it, you know, because this is your baby, right? How involved are you with the story of your baby? Yeah, I'm involved. I mean, it's great because they understand that too. And that this is something special and it's also unique. It's NFTs and these NFTs are still coming out. It's going to be interesting here as we really start to um, ratchet things up, how these two worlds can kind of like coincide, which goes back to like how I'm really like the whole vision or plan all along was merging the two worlds, like, you know, non-crypto and crypto. Um, so you know, yeah, like we're working on, you know, identifying a few writers we like and, and things like that. Um, and it's going to be interesting to see at what stage it starts integrating into the chapters more and, and things like that. It's fun. It's a blast. So are you a crypto investor yourself? Yeah, of course. Have you invested in any artists yourself? Or, I mean, you don't have to tell me that. Are there any artists that you have an eye on that you particularly like course, that you want to give props to? I love Lothabo. Um, Lothabo is one of my favorite artists, Mad Dog Jones, um, Blau, Ferocious, 100%. Um, there's so many innovative things happening around crypto and NFTs. So like t saying you have a favorite artist is, is kind of like, um, it's difficult because there's some that are doing it in, a, like in an innovative way in the sense of how they're using the, the token. There's some that are producing incredible art, right? Digitally native art. Like, so there's like a couple of different verticals you can look at when you're exploring on what you like and who's doing what. 
like for example with aku like you know that's like uh that's being innovative with a token you know what i mean that's that's different than let's say uh it's more like the art that's the idea it. yeah for releasing an amazing artwork right like so from a collector's standpoint it, it's just whatever your appetite is or what you're looking for there's there's people all over the place that you can dive into and support that's exactly right well i don't really think i've got that much more to to ask uh, you about i just wanted to ask you about your nfts ask you about your original artwork I do want to tell you don't stop throwing away your artwork that you don't like Mm, it's all gone <laughs> because you should do you should do like just a time capsule right of like all of the work that you want to throw away that you would throw away just put in a time capsule and then one day when you're like 80 let them auction that off and that's left for your daughter or whatever. i won't let them auction that off no chance <laughs> that, it belongs, it belongs where it belongs that's the dumpster right. Right, 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 right. Thank you for coming on. We're looking forward to chapter three, which will be getting dropping next month. Until then, we can go to Art Angels and see your work and yep. learn more about your charitable uh, contributions as well on Art Angels. Yep. Check it all out on Art Angels, Aku Dreams on, on social media, and uh, just follow along in the journey. All right. Yeah. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you for listening.